So I think in reality this is a tough one because we all play squash because we're competitive. We play because we want to win if we're playing, you know, certainly league matches. We're in the league to be competitive. So going in there and, and working on something in that situation is actually quite an awkward one to do because ultimately you do want to win and that's why you're playing squash. So for me it's a balance. Obviously the rate of improvement will be quicker if you're just thinking about that good technique all of the time. But in reality, you want to still be confident with your squash. You still want to be enjoying it. So the more you can do it in practice and then let it naturally creep into your game, the kind of more enjoyment you'll gain from it, I guess. So my best advice in this situation would be to, to get on court, do as much practice as you can. That's where you want to make the changes. And then when it comes to playing squash, just try and enjoy it. Focus on, on playing the best squash you can winning matches and try not to worry too much about the specifics because ultimately you might lose the lose the points but as well you haven't got the time your mind is kind of, isn't fully focused on changing that technique it's also focused on on trying to win and, and trying to beat your opponent so that isn't the best time to necessarily make those changes for me it's solo practice was all about developing skills and understanding what you could do with with your racket I mean we go through phases of hitting drives and and you know repetitive drives in the back corner five ten minutes at a time just understanding what your racket face does where the ball should be bouncing you know and that repetition leads to improved accuracy improved quality of shot the more balls you can hit the more your game is naturally going to improve the more accurate you're going to become that's going to creep into your match play. So I don't think you can ever underestimate the kind of importance of solo practice. Peter Marshall used to do four or five hours a day. Uh, I know from personal experience that the, the point that my game improved the most was when I was at university and I had limited people to play against. And I'd just go and do lots and lots of solo practice. And a lot of it would be kind of imaginative, non-structured stuff where I'd just be hitting top spins or take, really trying to cut the ball in or almost playing some trick shots, but understanding what my racket face could do and developing skills that then crept into my match play. So it wasn't necessarily just about looking good in the knockup. It certainly wasn't about looking good in the knockup. Everything I did was about understanding what my racket face did, what I was capable of, or getting into a groove and repetitively hitting the ball into the back corners, into the front corners, hitting cross-court nicks, understanding where the nick was, understanding where the angle was. For me, the more solo practice you can do, the better you will become. Obviously, you can't replace match play or you know, getting on court and doing some, some competitive game play or competitive uh, condition games. But having that ball skill, that understanding of the racket face and what you need to do to get the ball into an area consistently will definitely make you a better squash player. I can't overemphasize how important solo practice is. The more you do, the better you'll get. Now, I think this comes down to the, your, partly down to your style of play, but also you know, how, how much you want to go after the game, how much you want to step up the court and look for, look to attack, look for the volley. You look at people like Rami or, or Shabagi, their natural tendency is to be attacking. They want to attack at, you know, when the opportunity presents itself. I think there is a balance between taking your opportunities when they present themselves and not just getting caught up going, it's the second shot of the rally, I have to hit the ball to the back of the court, because you don't. If you feel comfortable and you feel comfortable, confident taking the ball in short, then by all means do so. If you want to kind of be that creative attacking style of player, as long as you feel confident, you can move well, you can cover the options, you're not going to lose the point if it isn't an out and out winner, then by all means go for those shots. And you know, there's no right or wrong answer here. It comes down to how much of a volley you are, how far forward you want to play, how far up the, up the court you want to get, how, where your tee position is, comes down to the quality of your length and how many opportunities present themselves. So I don't think it's clear cut between you're either a defensive player or you're going to go all out of attack. 
it's just about building pressure, creating opportunities. And then when they present themselves, you can either keep applying more pressure or take it in. So in answer to the question, I don't think there's, a, there's one way or the other. You've just got to know what works for you. Push it.